Well, good afternoon. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to Feral Woodcraft. My name is Joe. Thank you very much for being here today. About a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I did a, a video, an EDC pocket dump, basically, and it generated quite a bit of discussion on a couple items that I, I carry on a daily basis. And I'm going to address an offshoot of one of those topics today. All of those topics I'm going to get into uh, individually and also in, on a grand scale, more so in the future, but I want to kind of piecemeal the conversation so we can just kind of hit up each topic on a more granular scale, so to speak. The object in question or the item in question is this tick key that I carry around. It's a handcuff key. Now, you know, a lot of folks, this is, this is mainly a bushcraft channel, a, a gear review channel, and a lot of folks are thinking, you know, why even discuss that, Joe? Well, you know, I am a big proponent. We don't talk about it a whole lot, but I am a big proponent of concealed carry, the, the right and the, the need to be prepared to defend yourself on a daily basis, both at home and when you're out and about in the real world, so to speak. And one aspect of self-defense is also being prepared to get yourself out of a bad situation. A lot of folks call that, you know, E&E &E skills, E&E &E gear, stuff like that and that's what we're going to hit up today the aspect of getting out of handcuffs it may seem a little bit odd but that is one aspect of the overall conversation of that EDC video that generated quite a bit of discussion so I guess in short we're here to talk about bracelets let me change the camera angle we'll talk some more before we go any further I do want to point out that anything shown in this video any any piece of gear any skill any tactic anything like that do not use this against a law enforcement officer that's a great way to get shot. I only advocate carrying this gear and practicing these skills and these methods only for basically bad guys. As far as justification for use, all you have to do is hit up Google, enter handcuffs, home invasion, similar searches to that, and you will see that bad guys or robbers, etc., etc., using handcuffs to subdue innocent victims is not too terribly uncommon. Anyway, with all that being said, let's move forward. I do want to point out that the, the subject at hand are these two sets of handcuffs right here from Schrade because I think that these are a valuable uh, tool as far as a training tool for your toolbox, so to speak. These are another set of handcuffs, same quality, different maker. I brought them out here for, just, for comparison purposes today. Uh, basically what I'm getting at and this is the need to practice. Little cards from Ready Man came out about a year ago, something like that. And there's a lot of folks that bought them, put them in their wallet, you know, for a rainy day, something happens, you know, maybe they just put them in their wallet because they think it's cool. But the fact of the matter is, just like with your self-defense firearm or your first aid kit, if you don't actually practice with the gear that you carry or the gear that you plan to use in a bad situation, should that bad situation happen, you're gonna be at a serious disadvantage over had you taken the time to break a card like this apart or break your first aid kit apart or you know get out and practice with your firearm so you know the tools you're using, you know how to use them, it's second nature, you can jump right in and get done what needs to get done. Another example I'd like to say, this card includes some uh, rudimentary lock picks as well. You can't expect to take this card and then take a, high, a relatively, a medium to high security lock like this Abus, which I have pinned this Abus myself. It is all security pin, six pinner. If you've never used lock picks before with a rudimentary set like this, you don't stand a prayer of getting into this lock. All that being said, leading into that, if you want to practice, you have to have the gear to practice, which in this case would be handcuffs. So why am I showing you these Schrade handcuffs today? This is SCHC2N and SCHC3N, I believe. Links will be in the description. These are very affordable at about 30, 35 bucks. Price on Amazon varies, but last I saw it was $33 and change for the, the chain set and uh, $35 and change for the hinge set. Why do I recommend these Schrade handcuffs specifically? Well, I recommend you own several different manufacturers but if you were going to pick one pair to practice on these cover pretty much all the bases as far as far as my experience goes i'm not trying to set myself up as any kind of expert but you know i do practice this fairly regularly um, i'm going to give you some links give you some other examples of guys who do teach this for a living that if you're wanting to follow a teacher don't follow me follow them uh, we'll get to that at the very end of this video but anyway, as far as these handcuffs are concerned, number one, these are NIJ approved, which basically means they are certified for law enforcement use, um, as are these. But I recommend these because the tolerances on these shreds are, um, are precise. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. These are a set of Smith & Wessons. I grabbed these just for an example. I'm not picking on Smith & Wesson. Uh, these are good handcuffs, not, not an issue. But if you can see, this tick key slides all the way in, no issue. No problem there whatsoever. Into these shreds. Goes in about halfway and meets a lot of resistance. 
the tolerances into the keyway of this handcuff are extremely tight. This is what they call their, their anti-picking keyway. Along the same lines, the Smith & Wesson. Take a shim that's specifically designed to bypass handcuffs. Get this paw a little bit further up so you can see. On this shred, it's a no-go. Let me show you why. See on the ratchet there, it's split in two pieces. See down the center line right there, it's got a steel bar. The ratcheting mechanism is split into two different pieces, which prevents your shim to get down into the paw down there. The paw on this set is right up near the end of the cuff itself, or is this shred is down in the center. Even if this ratchet mechanism or the locking mechanism here didn't wasn't split in two and have that bar in the center to prevent your standard shim from going down in there. Uh, it probably wouldn't have enough length to actually bypass it anyway. So if that's the case, if these are so good, so hard to bypass, why do I recommend them? Because they're the hardest. And if you're only going to buy one style, one manufacturer's brand, or one manufacturer's take on a good set of handcuffs, then it just makes sense to me to get the hardest. So are these handcuffs unpickable? No, I've done it. Are these handcuffs unshimmable? No, I've done that as well. Am I gonna show you how in this video? No, it, that, that would be a longer drawn out video with making custom tools. Anyway, if you guys are interested in knowing how to bypass these and how to pick these, let me know and I'll put it together. Now I do recommend getting both the hinged and the chained versions. Why? Let me show you. You have a lot of freedom of movement here. Ah. But as you can see, using this tick key, isn't the quickest thing in the world. You don't have a whole lot to hang on to. It's an excellent option. Don't get me wrong. It's an excellent option. But practice and know how to use it. And on these hinged keys, as you can see, your range of motion is greatly reduced. I'm actually digging into my hands pretty hard trying to do this. Ah. There's a definite benefit to practice with the gear you carry. So I do recommend these because honestly, these are the hardest of the law enforcement style that I have come across to get past. Like I mentioned before, these are certified for law enforcement. So if you're a police officer, these will work for you if your department will let you. Um, again, these are about 30, 35 bucks on Amazon. Links will be in the description. I will also leave a link to these tick keys. I have played with several different uh, concealable keys. As far as uh, super concealable, this is probably the best that I've come across. Secondary would be the one and uh, the kits sold by Black Scout Survival. I will leave links to the description in that as well. If you want to learn more about these skills, this skill set, you want to learn more about it, learn how to do it yourself. I'm not setting myself up as a teacher here by any stretch of the imagination. If you want to learn more about it, learn from somebody who knows what they're doing, check out Jack Richland's uh, Black Scout Survival Escape and Invasion DVD. Link will be in the description. I can't recommend this DVD enough. All right, well, I'm sure this video turned out to be a little bit longer than I expected. I, I do have that tendency to ramble there. And I know we do talk quite a bit about wilderness or primitive type survival subjects on this channel quite a bit. And this is a, a step out from that and more along the urban or more modern survival type stuff. That is a significant aspect of my life. Just never really talked about it that much on this channel and remember guys practice 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 no matter what aspect of survival what skill you're working on if you don't practice that skill is not going to be worth anything anyway thank you very much for being here today i do appreciate your time very much if you guys like this video enjoyed it like to see more like it please hit that thumbs up let me know i would appreciate it if you enjoy content such as this there's a red subscribe button right down here make use of that and hang around for some more videos and as always hit up that comment section let's talk about this any aspect of this type of thing you would like to talk about. If I can help you out there, I will. Anyway, thanks again for being here, and I will see you next time. I hope you guys have a great day.